plot revenge of yours hit the victim way worse than you thought it would. To the point you said, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Ninth grade honors English class. The teacher didn't like me. Only teacher I ever had that didn't. Others would get frustrated with my lack of effort at times, but still liked me as a person. She just flat out did not like me. One of the reasons was that she didn't like athletes, because they would miss her class regularly for travel. And I played three sports, so I was missing a good bit. Now, I was also missing for academic stuff like math and science competitions and quiz bowl tournaments, but she was particularly bothered about missing for sports. Case in point, she would intentionally double the amount of homework due the day after long away games, knowing that the players wouldn't have time to finish it all. And shocker, she didn't check homework every single day, but always checked after away games. She would also give me 70s and low 80s on papers without any red marks on them, but people around me would have red marks all over and would have 90s. After one particularly low grade on an assignment that I knew I actually had done really well on, I inquired about it. Her exact response was that I was only doing 70% of my ultimate capacity, and the others were doing 90% of theirs. So, I specifically asked, Does that mean my paper can just be better than someone else's but be 20 points lower? And she said, Yes. And to show this wasn't just me misunderstanding things, she recommended me for an advanced writing class a year earlier than students were supposed to be able to take it. So if those two things weren't bad enough, she gave us an opportunity for extra credit toward the end of the year. We had to go to a local college's rendition of Antigone, and then write a 2500 word paper on it and tie it into what we discussed in class on the play, and also turn in our ticket and play bill. It was due on a Monday and the play was only going on Friday to Sunday, so there was no way to turn it in ahead of time. But I was going to miss class that Monday all day for an academic competition representing the school, and it was the biggest one of the year, like had to place top 10 in a previous competition to qualify, so obviously it's an excused absence. I told her an entire week prior to the play that I was going to miss on Monday, and she told me multiple times to turn it in first thing Tuesday morning. So I go to the play, write the paper, go to the competition Monday, and place first in one category and second in another, and then Tuesday morning before basketball workouts at 7am I go to her room to turn in the assignment. She refuses to take it because it's late, and she didn't recall ever suggesting I could turn it in on Tuesday. She told me four times. Her reasoning. 1. Another student that missed for the competition was able to turn it in, but that student lived across the street from the school. I lived 20 minutes away and couldn't drive. 2. My mom was a teacher at the school, so I could have just sent it with her, except I'd been told to turn it in Tuesday, so there was no reason for me to think to have my mom turn it in for me. Plus, she has her own students and classes to worry about. 3. I could have done the work Monday evening, which wouldn't be fair to the other students. So I went into the metadata for the paper that showed the last time it had been saved was Saturday afternoon. She still refused to grant me any credit for it. So I was out the $25 for the ticket, the time that it took, plus it really inconvenienced my mom who had to pick me up Friday from practice, rush me home to shower and change, and then rush me back downtown for the play, and then come pick me up two hours later. So my mom was pretty upset about it too. This teacher also prided herself on the fact that nobody had ever made an A on her final exam. She thought she was the toughest teacher ever. Really, she just loaded students up with a bunch of busy work. So the last day of classes, she gave a few minutes at the end of class and asked, What's your biggest wish to the class as a whole? I piped up, I wish for an A on the exam, and she laughed. Yeah, and I wish for a million dollars and to not have to deal with you anymore. So all of that sets up the final exam. It's 100 questions and then a 5 point bonus question that asked those generic, what was your favorite part of the class, what did you learn, etc. We got 2 hours to take the exam and students that finished early had to wait until 1 hour was up so that there was just 1 point of people getting up and leaving rather than being distracting throughout. So I finished the 100 questions in about 20 minutes. So I spent the remaining part of the hour just blasting her in the bonus question. I said, I'm not sure I learned anything, and pointed to her never making any comments on how to improve my writing. I said my favorite part of the class was it finally being over, not having to deal with her crap anymore, and brought up a number of little other things that happened on top of the mentioned above. And I said that she was by far the worst teacher I had ever had, and that the school was worse off with her teaching the entire ninth grade. The bell rings for the hour, and I'm the only person of the entire 110 students to leave at the hour mark. Now, on exam days, the teacher doesn't proctor their own exams. This is so they're available to answer questions, or if the classes are split among different rooms. So I have to wait for my mom to finish proctoring a different exam, so I'm just sitting out in the breezeway. The teacher finds me, holding my exam, with tears in her eyes. She tells me to meet her in the principal's office. She then storms off, so I head over. As I'm waiting there, I recount what happened to the soccer coach who was sitting there because he made some comment about, Surprised to see you sent in here. Eventually, she comes back in with my mom, who she pulled out of proctoring an exam, and we all go in to see the principal. She's crying, screaming, literally choking every minute or so. After about 45 minutes of me spilling everything I'd gone through that year, 
all things I'd already vented about to my mom plenty of times, the principal finally looks at her and goes, How much was the question worth? She said five bonus points. He said, Then just don't give him the bonus points. So I made a 98 on the final instead of a 103. Missed two. Every other student got the bonus points and the next highest grade was an 81. Thinking she would get the last laugh, I noticed a few days before grades were due that one of my assignments from the second week of class all the way back in August had been dropped 10 points. My final grade ended up being a 94.4, which was a B at the time, but I couldn't prove that she had altered my grade. I just had them all in a spreadsheet to determine my grade ahead of time, should have been a 95.2, but nothing that would prove anything, since I could have just typed it in wrong, but I didn't, obviously. The summer after, the school decided to change to a 10-point scale, and so 90 plus was an A, and my B became an A. And she had to start accepting assignments via email. Two years later, she was fired after other students started having real issues with her. Prior to me, the administration just thought it was a case of students complaining about the hard teacher. Still think she deserved every bit of it. But I certainly didn't think it would set her in motion of getting fired. Though, again, she deserved it. Hopefully, people are still reading. She sucked. If this teacher had years to straighten their own stuff out before getting fired and didn't, then it's on them, really. Even initially, they were obviously just making life hard for students for the sake of it, which is stupid and pretty against what teachers should do. So that's already not great, but hey, people can change, people can get better, you know? She was given the opportunity to and didn't. So yeah, Opie has nothing to feel bad about. That was an absolute unit of a first story though, so I hope these next ones are shorter. Story 2. In elementary school, there was a bully kid who would make fun of me. I had a bad bowl cut and was pretty small, so it wasn't surprising. Me and my friends usually just ignored him. Anyway, one day this kid from Brazil moved into the house next to mine. He was a year older. We used to play soccer together every day after school. I mentioned to him once that this kid would call me names and usually while walking home from school would follow behind me taunting me. One day I'm leaving school and this kid is going slowly behind me on his bike shouting stuff, just dumb kid stuff, you know? Brazil kid comes out of nowhere, knocks the kid off the bike and just starts beating him. Bully is on the grass crying and bleeding. Brazil kid grabs the bike and gives it to me and says, You can keep this, and then walks away. I, I didn't know what to do. I just laid the bike next to the kid and walked home. He wasn't at school for like a week. Later in life, I found out that the kid had a really crappy home situation with abusive parents. I was 10 at the time. Always felt bad for that. Quit bullying me though. I still occasionally see that Brazilian guy. I don't even think he remembers it. Cool on him for helping in his way, but I just think it went too far. Story 3. My friends and I used to pull a lot of pranks on each other growing up, and about 10 years ago I was helping my buddy set up a new business. He was ordering business cards, and the company he was going through was offering I think 500 or so free with a large order, so we decided to prank our other friend. We made business cards with his name, phone number, home address, and had his job title as Professional Creep, with the slogan, If I'm creeping, you ain't sleeping. We passed these cards out all over town. He was getting really harassing phone calls for a while and couldn't figure out why. After about two years, he found one of the cards on a random fridge at a party and put two and two together. He was pissed and is still getting random calls ten years later. I felt really bad about that one. Look, it's funny until you start putting real personal information on it. That's about it. Like, phone number, home address? Absolutely not. You don't do that. Especially not when you don't know where those cards are going to end up. OP, you should feel bad about this one. Really though, he should at least change his number, but yeah. This is a misstep for sure. Story 4. Had a lawyer a few years back who was a piece of absolute crap. 1. Would go months between returning phone calls. 2. Constantly late with court filings to the point the courts moved multiple times to have the case dismissed from lack of action. 3. Lied to me constantly about anything and everything. 4. Refused to be fired. Seriously, when I told him he was fired, he just ignored me and kept presenting himself as my lawyer. I had to get the courts involved to stop him. 5. Lied about me. Our client has been unreachable. We're considering dropping them. Like what? I tried to call you 84 times in the last three months. You didn't answer or return a single one. 6. When I finally did fire him, he told me I had to be in court on a specific date. That didn't work for me at a specific time. That also didn't work for me. Or else the motion to withdraw wouldn't be accepted. So I got to the courtroom and the judge was super nice, but confused as to why I was there. And when I told him the story, the judge just goes, Yeah, this was all done electronically. Not sure why your lawyer would tell you that other than to be a jerk. Needless to say, by the end of all this, I was pissed, and wrote a 10-page bar complaint about four different lawyers in their offices' unethical behavior. Well, the Bar Association decided this was a firm, wide, encouraged pattern of behavior, and threw the book at the partners. Disbarred for five years, restitution to clients, and only allowed to practice under supervision for a period of five years after they return. I felt a little bad, but goddamn, I was so frickin' sick of being jerked around. Story 5. My brother and cousins were walking home from school. Well, my brother and I were walking and my cousins were on bikes. 
They kept circling us and making fun of us because we didn't have bikes. One of my cousins then spits on me. Out of reflex, I blasted her with my trumpet case and she went flying, landed on the concrete, and broke her arm. I felt awful. It was the first and last time I ever hit a girl. My family believed every word of the story, knew this cousin was always a total jerk to me, and largely believed she had it coming. I still felt awful, though. Story 6. My grandpa was a bit old school, and gave me prison yard advice for my first week of school. He said, If anyone picks on you, just deal with them right then. Don't take it. First week of kindergarten, a grade 1 kid was pushing me around, not letting me go to class. I pushed him down against the fence and kicked him in the face three or four times, splitting his nose. Almost got kicked out of school until they found out my grandpa had told me to do it. Thing is, no one messed with me after, and that guy was nice to me all the way through to graduation. Story 7. My sister used to kick my butt on the regular. She had mad anger problems and would go berserk over the littlest things. One time I turned the light on while she was trying to sleep, she beat me up, and I ended up going to prom with bruises all over me. All through the years, I never hit her back. I was a super sensitive kid, and if I ever hit back, I ended up crying to my mom about how I loved my sister and hated to hurt her. After I graduated, she had calmed down a bit, but still had issues. Coming back from a small party one night, and she is back on her old BS. Just getting mad over something stupid and going totally crazy over it. We get home and get out of the car, and I say I'm driving home. She keeps saying I'm too drunk, even though I've only had two to three mini beers. She grabs the back of my shirt, and I am so upset at her. I turn around really fast with my fist out to hit her arm or something, and she immediately lets out a blood-piercing scream and drops to the ground. Blood is spurting everywhere. She leaves a trail as she runs inside and wakes up her mom and dad. Turns out, I broke her nose. Pretty frickin' bad. But my mom and dad kept saying it couldn't be that bad because I had done it, and that she must really have been screwing with me for me to have done something like that after all these years. I felt so awful. I cried and tried to say sorry, but she ended up going to the hospital. I don't feel so bad now because she purposely never paid the bill, thinking she could bully me into paying it, and she never lets it go. She always says I'm the reason her credit and stuff is bad, and that she still has collections agencies calling her over the ER bill. I ain't paying that. Consider it payment for the years of abuse. Story 8. This one wasn't really a planned revenge, but it's one I still feel guilty about whenever I think about it. When I was a kid, I was extremely easy to scare with the jump scares, and I hated them. I would always enter fight or flight mode whenever something jumped out at me. Then I would be mad as hell afterward. When my buddies caught on to this, they made it their business in life to jump out at me and scare me any chance they got. Despite my hate of being scared, I was a huge fan of Halloween, and I had a Halloween party every year either close to or on the big day. Naturally, this was the night when all my friends would do their damnedest to scare me so bad that I would bolt and run. They succeeded a few times when we were all under 9, but something shifted in me the year I turned 10, and none of us knew until it was too late. As usual, I had my big Halloween party. As usual, all my buddies were there. And as usual, one of them wanted to try and scare the pants off of me. About midway through the evening, I went down the hall to use the restroom, and while I was there, my friend, I'll call him Aaron, scampered down the hall after me and hid in a darkened doorway. I came out of the restroom, started down the hall, and Aaron jumped out at me and grabbed my arm. Ordinarily, something like this would have made me bolt, but for some reason that night, the flight side of my fight or flight got turned off. The moment he grabbed me, I whirled and punched him square in the face without even thinking about it. It was all pure instinct, and after impact, I realized what I just did and freaked out. Aaron wrenched his mask off and was clutching his face and groaning, or so I thought, and I yelled for my dad, concerned I had really hurt my friend. My dad and all my other friends came running down the hall to find out what had happened. My dad flipped on the hallway light, and what greets us? Aaron with his face covered in blood. I am instantly horrified thinking I busted his nose, but as I'm spewing apologies to him, I begin to realize he's not groaning, he's laughing. He grabs me by the hand I punched him with and yells, What are you apologizing for? That was freaking awesome! And he yanked my hand up over my head like I was a boxing champ, and starts telling everyone how cool it was of me to just haul off and slug him. If you hadn't guessed, Aaron was a pretty cool kid. He thought it was great that I'd suddenly found the courage to defend myself. My dad helped him get cleaned up, though he insisted on keeping his now bloody costume on and inspected his nose. Thankfully, it wasn't actually broken, but I still feel a wave of guilt when I remember the sight of his face covered in blood, and remember the feeling of my fist hitting him in the schnoz. I'll always be grateful to him for handling it so well, and encouraging me to stand up for myself, but I still feel so guilty about decking him that I can't even imagine how I would feel if I'd actually broken his nose. You know, some... <laughs> 
Some people are just awesome like that. They don't take it personally because it wasn't. Even though they have, like, every right to because they did just get punched in the face, but they don't take it personally. They're just like a mixture of, uh, yeah, I kind of deserved that. And that was freaking awesome, dude. So yeah, Aaron's a pretty cool kid. I definitely get why OP is freaked out by that, though. Turning on the lights to see my friend's face covered in blood after I punched him would be less than ideal. Story 9. High School. Oh man, this poor kid I used to work with at Wendy's, Kevin. He was a juvenile delinquent. He was a few years older than me. A little bit bigger, had nasty tattoos on his neck, and was supposedly out of jail on work release. He tried to be a tough guy and bully me whenever we worked together. Stuff like generally talking smack unprovoked, getting up real real close in my face, and that stance where you puff out your chest and pull your arms back like you're gonna swing. The most irritating was when he would walk right up in my face and then flinch like he was gonna throw a punch at me and then just to laugh and say some rude stuff. I got along with the just about everyone at work, and he did somewhat, but we just did not fit together. One day, the exchanges between us were so apparent and obviously stressed, everyone working was talking about me fighting him. I dispelled these rumors as I wanted to keep my job, but my destiny on this day said otherwise. First was the backdoor incident. The store had a large backdoor with a peephole in it, and it could only be opened from the inside. There was a buzzer outside that employees would push if they wanted back in, while Kevin was locked outside and his patients while awaiting his re-entry had run out. Instead of tapping the buzzer, this guy was mashing it and holding it down, while everyone inside went nuts. We were all busy, and I was running to the back to grab some heavy boxes. Holding these boxes, I was going to open the back door while I walked past. I tried to push on the door, but it wouldn't open. I leaned into it, but couldn't push much more because of the boxes I was holding. I was in a hurry, so I yelled, Get back! I'm going to kick the door! And he did not hear me over the loud, constant buzzing. I gave that door a swift, this is Sparta kick, and it opened about three inches and then bounced closed again. What the hell? I kicked it again and it opened, revealing a bashed and somewhat upset Kevin. He had been trying to look in the peephole when I kicked the door. I had just broken the crap out of his nose, like the tip was almost touching his cheek, bright red purple, swollen eyes, broken. He was pissed. Immediately, I started apologizing and backing away from him, but he came at me like a rabid monkey. Quickly, we were surrounded by employees and separated. I was told to go up front and manage fries, and to not come into the back part of the store until Kevin left to the hospital. Then, the final event. Less than ten minutes later, I was working the fries, which entails grabbing a metal basket out of boiling hot oil and dumping the fresh fries into an adjacent tray. I was doing this, and everyone around me was talking about how I just broke Kevin's face. On his way leaving our store for the hospital, he decided to come right up to me again and try to instigate a fight, while I was dumping some fresh fries. Kevin pulled his signature move of flinching at me like he was going to throw a punch. I retaliated by returning my own flinch with the basket I was holding. I didn't actually hit him with an incredibly hot fry basket, but I forgot about the boiling hot oil still clinging to it. When I flinched at him and shook the basket, tiny, flaming hot drops of grease splattered his face and neck. I had just broken his nose by accident, then threw boiling hot oil on his face by accident. Instant fight. On the ground. I'm a wrestler, so his freshly broken and burned nose was just smashed and wiped across a dirty floor for a few seconds before it was broken up. He was an absolute mess. He left for the hospital, I got sent home. That was it. No charges. No questions from my managers after either. No more being scheduled with Kevin. Not even any paperwork about two vicious assaults and fights in the same day. I felt really bad, but simultaneously kinda justified. Both incidents were honest accidents, which could have been avoided if he weren't such a jerk. I still felt like the outcome was worse than reasonable. Shout out to OP's empathy here for being able to feel bad about this. Because, from what OP described at least, yeah, they had every right to get into it with this guy. And these were honest accidents. The door one more so than the oil one. I feel like the oil one is more a thing that OP should not have done, like an actual mistake on their part. But the door one is just like, whatever. OP said that they're opening the door with a kick, and, I don't know, this dude didn't listen. Too busy pressing that loud buzzing button. On that one, he reaps what he sows. However, that is all the time for stories we have for today. We didn't get through many because they were some real chunky ones today. But I hope you enjoyed the ones we did get through. I also hope you have a wonderful day, or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.